We got a full house tonight. Preseason is back, which for some people just means football is around the corner. For other hardcores like me, that means you already broke up, open the DK's, uh, you know, bankroll management, and you already you're already going to work to try to build up that week one prize pool for the beginning of the year. Some people, obviously, I think Goku got into it earlier. We can get into it some more, but you, we can do rainmaker for preseason. So like. Football is back, but I, Donnie, Gov, and even Evan, if you watched it, we've been covering football on this channel from the XFL to the USFL, and I feel like it's really helped us with preseason. I'm sure it's helped you with Dynasty, and that's exactly what we got up here to start the show is Evan's Dynasty picks. So I don't know if you want to introduce them, if you want to get our instant reaction. We can really go anywhere from here. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, in, in case I'm not known enough on this podcast, uh, my name is Evan Sather. I'm with uh, Barely Fantasy on Twitter, uh, Bear as in B-E-A-R. Um, and then what we're looking at right now is the 10-team Dynasty PPR rookie draft in my home Dynasty League that I had two weeks ago on July 31st. Um, so I had six draft picks for this particular one. Uh so one in the first, two in the second, two in the third, and then one in the fourth. Uh, I had needs all over the place with my team. I had taken third place two years in a row, 2021 and 2022, and knew that I needed to replenish some more talent to replace the old guys that I'd sell for uh, rookie draft picks. So uh, first round, I went Charbonnet as it was a close uh, decision between Charbonnet and uh, Zay Flowers, where could have gone wide receiver, but I had also just traded for Tyree Kill to strengthen my team. So I figured, okay, I think I could get by wide receiver for a little while longer. I can try to reach for some value picks later. Let's start with Zach Charbonnet as running backs are not as plentiful in this draft. I like I wanna... the Charbonnet play because you were able to get Reed uh, later on, who I'm a huge fan of, a huge fan. He, um, I think he's going to make an impact this year. I think he's going to make an impact for years to come. He's one of those like age experience rookies where it's like he might not have a, a top end, you know, explosion type season, but he's going to be consistent from rookie year to 10th year. Like, I don't think you'll have a problem there. Yeah, so I, I, I agree. I like Charbonnet. Charbonnet was probably the best running back. Like, you could have, like, if you really liked it, you probably could take an A-chain. But, like, I agree there wasn't much at running back, so might as well get it there and see what wide receiver comes back to you. That makes a lot of sense to me. Donnie, you got anything, anything to add? Um, I honestly don't know that much about Sherman, to be honest. But I, I don't <laughs> I don't I, like any of the running backs in this draft in general. Yeah, I I, I, I agree with that. Ones, I'm not great. Like, I'm not thinking, oh, wow. No. Yeah, that's why my thought was, like, if you wanted A-Chain, you could have taken him, since Bijan and Gibbs were the only other two to really take in this draft, in my mind. So, like, getting your guy there. Because, like, honestly, if you don't take Charbonnet then you have to take A-Chain too because he's probably not coming to the third round. And I wouldn't want to just, like, come out of this with, like, just, like, Tank Bigsby or something. So, like, I, I like the move of grabbing your guy Charbonnet or at least grabbing the running back you like the most on the board right there. Exactly. And I know that Charbonnet is going to be something that's going to scare away a lot of common folk because he's going to be sharing that backfield with Ken Walker. But in my eyes, at least, I don't know if there will be a lot of Dynasty people who disagree with me, but... I'm always willing to take the talent over anything else. Uh, like you said, too, uh, Donnie, a chain has a fanta uh, fantastic spot here with the Miami Dolphins, but I'm not entirely convinced that he's going to be the guy in Miami because I was worried about Dalvin Cook possibly going to the Dolphins and crippling his short-term dynasty value. So figured I might as well go with the two-headed monster of Charbonnet and then move forward to the second round. Not to mention, did did the fact that you already had Tyree Kill factor into the Char into the Charbonnet decision? Yes, absolutely. And uh, the the Baltimore Ravens passing game, I don't hate, but Zay Flowers is also somebody I would have been okay with if I had to take him at the 
uh, spot that I happen to have at the eighth pick in the first round. But running backs getting more and more rare in, in fantasy value. Figured I might as well take my chances with Charbonnet. They, they did invest a second round draft capital in him. So whether he actually pans out like on the field right away, that's also speaks to the antique talent of what they believe. So there's the talent that he actually is physically and then the belief they have in him. Like when you, when you invest that kind of capital in a player, whether you're a fancy owner or a real life owner, you're saying you, you know, you believe in this guy. Absolutely. So and then Ken, Walker, was Ken Walker hurt at the time, by the way, or no, he has a, he has a groin issue that is allowing he right now he's allowed to uh, sprint in a straight line, but it's making side cuts. That's probably going to be an issue because he's got the groin injury. That's a injury. lingering thing too, though. That's probably yes, especially for the linebacker position. Why don't we go on to your next pick? Because I don't like this one. I hate it actually. It makes my okay. So C.J. Stroud was not the quarterback I was going to go for. Uh, later in the second. I was hoping I could grab Bryce Young with this particular pick, uh, but I guess I shouldn't have been too surprised that the person with the uh, the first the 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 first pick in the second round uh, would have grabbed him right then and there. So Stroud was I don't want to call him my consolation prize, but I also like the opportunity that he's got. I thought he was a damn fine quarterback at Ohio State, uh, just behind Justin Fields. And this Houston Texan team is going to be awful, but I like the security blanket he's going to have with Dalton Schultz right away. And I also invested in John Mechie on my dynasty team as well, hoping that he can do better mm-hmm. than just be a slot guy. And Maybe I'm too. willing to take that chance because I've already got Mahomes as my top quarterback. And let's say, you know, Stroud has a half decent rookie season, but you don't believe in him after. I'm sure his value holds up and you can get a decent trade for him. Yeah, agreed with that. I mean, I hope it doesn't come down to that, but time will tell. I I, I would have waited and took a guy much later, and Will love it. I, I'm not a, I'm not a CJ guy at all. I, I don't. And it had nothing to do with Ohio State. Like I don't like the narrative. Um, I, unfortunately, this one actually fits for me. Just not like him, and everyone's going to jump to the Ohio State, you know, NFL uh, tran- transparency. But it's one of those things. I just I, I don't know. But weirdly enough, you said you're not high in the Texans. I actually think it's a fine year one play because I do think the Texans are going to get over five and a half wins. So I do think he'll be able to contribute for you in year one, you know, depending on how it goes. Yeah, and I think that's – I'm convinced the Texans are done with Davis Mills at this point. There was a reason they took Stroud number two overall, and that's already a dangerous pick for quarterbacks these days. Unless you happen to have a a a once-in-a-generation talent like Joe Burrow, that's going to – make cj stroud's uh that's a lot of work to to, that he'll have to make uh work out for himself but i like the news on him i like the fact that he's requesting more game film from the houston texans staff to study more um i i just hope it translates into success on the field yeah gov any thoughts i did not like at any of the quarterbacks in this draft class I would have seen a situation where you get out of here without grabbing any of them unless you needed one. I agree. I would have preferred Bryce young over Stroud, but that that's really my only opinion. And like, I'm a Panthers fan. We just drafted Bryce young. I still don't think there was a good quarterback in this draft. Yeah. I, I, I disagree, but, but people will tell you like, you guys know, I have an irrational love for Kyle Pitts. For some reason, I just I want a Kyle or Will Levitz to be something. I don't know. I don't know if it's that. When I first saw him, he reminded me of Matthew Stafford, and I just couldn't get it out of my head. And I know he hasn't looked great at times, but I just there's something about him. Something tells like my football heart says this guy's got it. You know, we're gonna find out. Yeah, and I wasn't happy with Will Le- Will Levis's landing spot, and I. I, I'm not fully convinced that he's going to be all that much better than what Malik Willis proved to be. Uh, I could be wrong, but we'll just have to wait and see how that turns out. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, I was definitely not a fan of him so much with the landing spot, but then when they got Hopkins, at least they had some weapons on offense. Uh, 
Can we speak about Mechie really quickly? Because we have him in our best ball, too. We we invested in season one, so it's a good transition. Yeah. I'm I'm a big fan of this guy. In fact, I think if he would have played last year, there's no chance you would have got him. You know, uh, well, we would have got him, I should say. On our, on our, like, like, I think this guy would have had a fantastic rookie year. I'm, yeah. I'm very high on him. A- absolutely. I agree with that. And John Mechie, actually, in last year's rookie draft, I got him with the second pick in the fourth round. Uh, nobody wanted him. So I was like, okay, they spent the second round pick on this guy and nobody in my league wants him. Bam, I'll grab him and I'll hold him in my IR, IR slot, see if he turns into somebody this coming year. And, and it's one of those things that you're going to have to wait on, but I, I do think he's going to pay off. Um, obviously, I, you know, I dropped him. You, you want to believe these things. So I, I have a question, though. So when you make these selections, how much, like, are you saying – I want to be right. I got to win. Or are you saying like I want the highest upside possible? Like how do you how do you evaluate risk reward? Because I don't want to put one the horse before the water. Like talk us through how you did it. Yeah. So it's actually a mix of everything you just mentioned. So it's got to be the upside and opportunity. It's got to be the talent, and I try to put talent before upside and opportunity, and. And like I was just saying earlier with how I grabbed John Mechie with the 402 last year, mm-hmm. uh, he was just right there on the board. Nobody wanted him because he was going to be out for the season with recovering from his leukemia condition. So I had an, I happened to have an extra IR slot, and I'm like, all right, I'm willing to wait on the talent. So let's grab him and let's see what he turns out to be next, this, uh, next year from what I was saying last year. So this coming year, um, I don't see Robert Woods – always being a reliable option for the Texans. So somebody's got to step up to be there with Nico Collins. So I don't see why it can't be John Mechie. He was fantastic in college. I'll make one more Mechie point. If if there's a comeback player of the year prop for Mechie, I would consider taking it. Um, uh, I, I I know DeMar Hamlin's probably the front runner, but I think uh, Mechie's but got... Why would he be the front runner, though? Like, is he even going to start? Like, let's be honest. Yeah, but but Donnie, it's an emotional award. So like, but Mechie has the story, the, the cancer, the, the story. He was on the sidelines ahead of schedule. Like, the guy has just as much upside from the emotional standpoint, and I think he could lead the Texans offense and a fun and a fun explosive offense too. I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of Nico Collins. I mean, Trout is gonna chuck the ball up, and Mechie's gonna be the one he's chucking to most likely. Let's be honest. Yeah, I like it. So I'm going to let you, uh, Gov take over now because I'm curious to see how you would look, what, what you would ask uh, Evan on his next couple of selections here. Well, I'm just trying to go through the draft board. It's like, so after CJ Stroud, I, I like Jaden Reed, honestly. Like, the more I see of him, the more I think he honestly is going to end up being like the second or third best wide receiver out of this draft class. Really, really, I agree. Like I, 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 like I see his work ethic and the talent is there. Like he's just not. I don't know why it. Like I don't know. My, again, you know me. I don't really watch college at all, so I don't know what college any of these guys play for. None of that. I don't know what they look like in college. I don't know why they're the number one overall pick. Nothing. I know Bryce Young went to Alabama, which. Historically means he's not going to be very good because <laughs> there's I've been like one good like playoff Hall of Fame good quarterback to come out of Alabama in m- my lifetime. Now I'm only like thirty ish, but like and I do have to go all the way back to Kenny Stabler, but like I don't remember another Alabama quarterback that came and did anything useful that you you usually know like. Especially with Alabama, you usually know what they are coming out because Alabama is so good. They have all the talent around them. If they can't produce with Alabama, then they're not going to produce with m- more talent in the NFL. So, like, I'm I, I, so just off of that, just off of that rant, like I actually do like Jaden Reed for mm-hmm. that next pick. Yeah, you, and I, I was just going to explain my uh, Jaden Reed pick as well. So. Jaden Reed was somebody I was pretty high on, being that 
The Packers spent that late second round pick on the guy, which told me, uh oh, they're not happy completely with Romeo Dobbs as their second wide receiver. And even then, who's to say Christian Watson is going to remain the top guy for a, a fairly unknown quarterback like a Jordan Love? Um, yeah, there was all these uh, uh, reports and rumors coming out of training camp that, oh, Jordan Love loves throwing the ball to Romeo Dobbs, uh, this and that. But you don't spend a second round pick on a wide receiver just to make him a rotational guy that is only in for like 50% of the snaps. It just doesn't happen. In a run-heavy offense. In a run-heavy offense, that's probably going to be the case here because uh, I, I, I don't know if that's going to be – uh, I, I don't know if Lafleur is going to end up like a McCarthy and try say he's going to run the ball more, and then it doesn't happen. But I like Reed's chances. I think he's too talented to leave on the bench. Not only that, but he's an aging rookie too. Like he he is not one of these rookies that you're looking to develop or like. Hey, you know, in a couple of years he's going to flash upside. He's one of those plug and play type guys. He reminds me a lot of Tim Patrick. Came out of Michigan State. Reliable hands. Um, I introduced Donnie to Tank Dell last night and told Donnie how good Tank Dell was. Reed reminds me a lot of Tank Dell as well. Just really sure. And Tank Dell had a crazy night and caught an amazing touchdown with his hands. That's, I mean, and I brought that up on purpose um, to say I think Reed and Dell had the best hands of anyone in this entire draft class for one mm-hmm. receiver. Like they. And think about this, like when we're talking PPR, when we're talking fantasy, and, and offenses are becoming more pass happy, even running, you know, oriented teams, we just mentioned it, it's still becoming overall a passing league. You want sure handy guys, you know. In the 90s, you wanted the bell cow running backs. Nowadays, I feel like even the slower guys, if the wide receivers are valuable, because you just get more of that, that passing personnel. We can go into your next couple of picks though, because I I really like them. And yeah, these next two picks are I think yeah, your third they're round gonna be steals. Yeah. Oh God, yeah, I can't, I couldn't believe those guys were still hanging uh, late in the third round when I snatched them both up because I was looking at uh, my other league mates uh, grabbing guys like Tank Bigsby, Deuce Vaughn. Uh, I I've been a Conda. I really hope I said his name right. Um, and then Will Levis went in the third, and I'm just like. All right, if no one's going to grab Jalen Hyatt, I was, I'll be transparent too. I was out on Hyatt because uh, third round wide receiver, uh, numbers didn't really impress me, and he was going to a messy Giants passing offense that tends to put put it on the entirely on the back of Saquon Barkley. So I was not as excited when they threw a uh, big $40 million a year contract on Danny Dimes, but I was looking at the fantasy life. Uh, rookie rankings and I'm like well I guess I gotta grab him I mean I'd be silly not to and now I'm looking at him in training camp and making all these tough catches and I'm like holy shit maybe I did make the right pick there (laughs) See, and and that is the one pick I think you made a mistake on just looking at how that draft how that round went with you taking Stroud I probably would have taken Tank just to have but he already has matching no I know that but historically Rookie wide receivers lock on with their other rookie wide receiver. So, like, yes, it would have technically. Isn't Mechie kind of a rookie, though? Again, technically, yes, but with Stroud and Tank would have had that we came out in the same draft class kind of like connection. So, like, that would have been something I might have prioritized in a draft myself and may have gone Tank and Laporta instead of Hyatt and Laporta right here just because I took CJ Stroud. Gov, I want to say really quickly, that's what I love about, about you and me is because I I know there's none that we always agree, but when me and you have a process or a strategy, we stick to it. We're not telling Evan, oh, you're a terrible or this yeah, is I don't think pick. the Hyatt pick is that bad. Like Hyatt and Bell yeah. are probably very cl- – like they're basically coin flip. But if I'm flipping that coin, I always love grabbing correlation as like yeah. a – like, 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 like when in doubt – Where's the correlation going? Yeah. Where, like, how, where, where does it help everyone? Well, it helps Stroud if Tank, and it helps Tank if Stroud. So that's where I would have like made my decision there. 
I so like not really a mistake, just like looking at what you got. That's the one thing I know seeing the way that round went because tank tank goes right after your two picks. So you could have went tank Laporta. Yeah. And I didn't want to go necessarily with tank because I've had the uh, awful fear that he was going to be buried on that wide receiver depth chart between Nico Collins, John Mechie, and then Robert Woods. And I don't even know how healthy Robert Woods is going to be all season long. I could be entirely wrong about Dell, but I just figured, well, the wide receiver core is up for grabs on the Giants. And I totally understand that point of uh, wanting to go with correlation to stack it up with the new rookie quarterback. It makes total sense. Right. But uh, why it was right there, and I'm like, ah, I got to grab him. <laughs> that make, and again, with what you just said, with the Giants like carousel of wide receivers, yeah. who knows who's actually going to take the job. I don't mind taking Hyatt there either. Like Hyatt oh. and Tank were basically the same. However, oh. you wanted to make the decision. Maybe I get to take, maybe you get that Giants wide receiver and you already have correlation with other wide receivers with Stroud, or maybe you add that extra correlation. And if Stroud actually ends up being good, he he raises all, rising water raises all boats kind of thing. It's like, yes. Yeah. And, and see, Gug, we've done enough shows and I, I've, I've swam enough waters with you know what kind of boat you were going to be pedaling i knew that correlation boat was exactly the rowboat you were you were going to oh yeah my two what what are my two things when we're building the DraftKings lineup i care not about running backs and correlate like that's like that's like my strategy all the time in a thing so what is like what were my critiques in this draft Eh, i don't really care for the charbonnet there's not really a good running back here and i would have correlated tank with Stroud. that's basically what i that's the analysis i brought it's the same crap I bring every day. But like you said, like we have our process. We have to stick to it. If you're always changing your process, then how do you ever know if anything works? Right. Now, if that process gives you diaper rash, you know, a- every single week, then it's time to change your ointment. Yeah, but, you got to change something. An ointment, right. the quit wiping front to side or something. I don't right, care. Right. Like, use something. <laughs> Quit going side to side. It's back to forth or whatever. Do something new. Get the bidet. You know, it's worth the money. Yeah, if you're not changing anything and you're getting and it's fucking up, then you change something. But if you keep changing things as they fuck up, you kind of have to watch something. You have to do nothing and let it fuck up a few times in a row while you figure out what you're supposed to change. Instead of, I see see it so often where people will change like five things at once to try to Mm -hmm. fix something. How about you change one thing and see if that did anything over the course of time? What was and then, change, then change the next thing. Then change the next thing. You might not be able to change everything all at once or in the court, like especially in DFS. There's times I think of something in football mm-hmm. or a few things I want to try. I don't have, I can't, in, in, in one football season, I might not have the time to try those things effectively in a strategy. Effectively. Right. That's the problem. If people think like, oh, I have the time to do this. Or even even you pick with, let's say C.J. Stroud, you go back to your point, Evan, with your quarterback, people, you know, you're like, oh, just, I'm sure there was people in your league when you were drafting that were like, oh, it doesn't matter between C.J. and Young, right? And then some people were probably so defiant one way or the other. But to Gus's point, it's like, as long as it makes sense with the process, then fine. But don't just go in there experimental and be like, well, if I come out with a rookie quarterback, I'm good. No, have a process. Like, have something. Because if you go in there bare and you don't have an idea, it's not going to go well. And then if you go in there trying to do too much, it's not going to go well. And we'll see that in DFS Cup too, where it's like, you know, you might be close to cashing, for example, on a Sunday. And you're allowed to change out the 4 o'clock games. Uh, before they start, and you'll see people make wholesale changes because they're like, "Well, I, you know, this guy did this. I gotta, you know, overreact." Or I'm, uh, you know, or you see that in like I'm sure week two of your dynasty league, you know, someone's like, "Oh, I lost the first two weeks," even though it's a dynasty league and we're not playing week to week, and it's not so much based on one season. You know, that guy's on the on the phone trying to make a bazillion trades, and you're like, "Well, I gotta, I gotta take advantage of this." <laughs> right. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and that, and that's, uh, and that's kind of coming back to the decision that I know wasn't as popular with taking CJ Stroud at the two Oh four. Uh, you know, I, I, I wasn't super impressed with 
any of the other quarterbacks either, but I just knew at some point, well, it's time to invest in a young quarterback at some point, and this seems to have a better quarterback draft class compared to last year, where it was just basically Kenny Pickett and then dart throws after that. And well, even Kenny Pickett was a dart throw. Uh, I, I guess you could put it that way, but like I, I was going to say the first round draft capital puts a lot of confidence in him, and they were going to give him those minutes. Danielle, I'll fight you on that. Kenny Pickett's good. I, yeah, I, I, I mean, he did enough that. this year, but or last this past season. But, like, there was a solid chance he would have slid to the third round, too, if it wasn't for Pittsburgh. I think we got to get a board. I think we got to – because we, we have so many good player takes. I think we got we to track some of these player takes that we have. Because, like, we have I'm a season – I'm fine with Kenny Pickett. Pickett. I just don't think it's much different than having a Mac Jones. I mean, whatever. Oh, I think that – okay. We'll, we'll, we'll put a pin in that one because <laughs> Mac Jones has a better chance of working at, at Mackie D's pretty soon. We posted it, Kenny Pickett. Uh, but, so, uh, if I could move forward with my Sam Laporta pick, um, tight end was not my priority at all in this draft because I already had George Kittle, and then before going into this draft, I also had uh, Dalton Schultz before I traded him later, as yeah. well as Juwan Johnson and Greg Dolchich. So I figured, okay, tight end is going to be perfectly fine. Sam Laporta happened to fall my way at the 308, so I was like, okay, uh, Detroit just traded TJ Hawkins into the Vikings for... Uh, whatever they got for him. I can't remember off the top of my head. He uh, is... A hot dog and a bag of peanuts. There you go, yeah. <laughs> um, and Laporta looking good in training camp and looking to be the top guy because none of their other tight ends look good at all. I figured, okay, well, he's right there. Got to grab him. And I ha I like him better than both uh, Michael Meyer and Luke Musgrave because Laporta came out of Iowa, which is also known as tight end U, which, hey, there's good chances that he could succeed with the dude, Dan Campbell. I do think that Laporta, now I'm biased, I'm a, I'm a Lions fan, but that also means I'm close to the situation. I do think Laporta is going to break the mold a bit where everyone thinks because he came out of Iowa, he's going to be a good <laughs> tight end. I think we actually drafted him to be more of a wide receiver type to, because if I if memory serves just the profile, just to show you I'm not biased because this is before he was on the Lions, I believe he had the most um, great broken tackles of any tight end coming out of the draft. And his <laughs> yards after the catch were really impressive. So he's actually got, like, really good at looseness, especially for the tight end. He played a lot more like uh, more like an inside slot receiver than you would probably imagine. I, I just think we utilize him a lot that way, which I think, in essence, is actually a better fantasy asset because that's the one – knock on like a guy like Kittle and stuff like that. It's like everyone knows how good he is. But part of how good he is means he's going to stay in the block. I think Laporta, especially with Jamison Williams being suspended for six games, is going to be relied on more as an offensive weapon. Yeah, and that's going to be another good point too because that will give him more opportunity to – uh, have Goff toss him the ball that way, and then that will be his six-week quote-unquote training period to see is he going to be a yet another tight end that's going to need two seasons to get good, or is he going to be great off the bat? And like we all know Jared Goff loves his safety blankets. Like He's going to get it to his running backs or his tight ends. Maybe yeah, Amonra takes a lot of the volume from that, but I I'm willing to take the chance on a safety blanket for Jared Goff. You got lucky with two other tight ends going, and you still got two, one of the two best tight ends that you could get. Because, like, Kincaid is very good. They're probably going to use him, and he has a great offense he's going to. And Laporte is stepping into a good spot in Detroit where he is basically the only guy other than Amon Ra in the passing game if he shows out. Musgrave was probably the third tight end to take, but that's only because of the training camp hype and the fact that for some reason he's just running with the ones at all times. Who, who else did they got in Green Bay, though? <laughs> but Davis did look good tonight, and Davis has looked good in his limited opportunities for, for uh, 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 a tight end out of the Packers. So strictly wide receiver type. But it, it is going to be interesting. I'm higher on that Green Bay offense in general, but I, I really am high on the Lions' Ben Johnson, who also was a, a tight end coach, by the way. So he does favor the tight end in his offense. I do think Laporta 
I mean, I think Laporta is the best tight end of this rookie class. And then Myers would have been second. Yeah. I actually really like a lot of the tight ends from this class. I don't think any of them are bad either. I mean, I think even Washington, who went to the Steelers, could be potentially another second set of hands uh, behind uh, Pat Fryermuth, and especially because Washington's a better blocker than Fryermuth anyway, allegedly. I think yeah. he'll, take, he'll take Pat's job within within five weeks. You think he's going to replace Pat, Pat on the depth chart? Yeah. But, like, Pat's not bad. That's the thing. No, Pat has no. had good, good years. But no. I, I'm high on the tight ends. I really do think the NFL is changing in a lot of ways, and I think we're going to put a lot more emphasis on the wide receivers and tight ends. And that's why I like this these selections by Evan here. I think it's but smart. In a year where Najee struggled last year, Washington might just be used as an extra offensive lineman now. Like, honestly. That wouldn't surprise me either, because it's not like they drafted Pat Fryermuth in the first place to block for Najee. Right. So I, I think that's going to more so be Washington's role there. And I, I, I he does have good hands, but, you know, I, I assume he's going to be more of a blocker for them. And quickly, we we played uh, Dwayne McBride last night in preseason. His yeah. hype coming out was tremendous. And nobody knows if it's Ty Chandler or if it's XL Hopeful and Smith. The Vikings' opportunity is wide open. And if I'm not mistaken – I don't think uh, Alexander Madison has gotten through an NFL season without getting injured in his whole entire career. And he's been a backup to Cook. Right, that's what I'm saying. He's been a backup, but he's been banged up even in the backup role. Well, like, Cook has been banged up as well, so it makes him a starter sometimes. I, you know, I know, either way. But I'm, but I'm just saying, like, none of this – makes me believe that he is like, okay, for sure ready to plug in. Yeah, and the thing with Dwayne McBride, who was my uh, 404 last pick in this draft, um, I was not ever really that big of an Alexander Madison fan, especially over the last two seasons where he's been far less efficient with the touches that he did get. Um, He played all 16 games. I think it was a 16-game season in 2021. Am I right? Uh, I think so, yes. Yeah, yes. So. so he did play a full season over 2021 and 2022, but he was averaging less than four yards per carry, and he doesn't really get that many goal line opportunities anyway, as we were just discussing, because he's the backup to Dalvin Cook. And I took McBride not knowing that he was going to have a rough first preseason game, in addition to the fact that the – Vikings training staff, coaching staff, is not impressed with any of the depth behind Madison for running backs. So as we're seeing the news today with Kareem Hunt, if he does end up agreeing to go to the Vikings, well, maybe I'll hold McBride in my taxi squad, but I don't know if that's going to brighten his chances getting any playtime. Listen, the reason why I really don't like the McBride pick is Logan and I did a little bit of a breakdown of his play style and everything. All I can think of watching him is Le'Veon Bell. The way he just, he's patient, he's stiff, but he makes awkward cuts, and he's he's quietly quick. The Vikings are not made for that. That line is not good enough to deal with a running back like that. It's very similar how when Le'Veon went to the Jets, it all fell apart. (laughs) Well, I I, I just hope McBride doesn't try to rap like Le'Veon Bell. (laughs) <laughs> it is true, but I will say that late in the draft and you're getting a guy that has the potential at a position where we don't know a lot of things and there really isn't any like there's very few bell cows these days and we're talking about a, a, an opportunity with presumably a good young offensive minded coach um, you, we, you know you could see something if not I mean, who knows? But I do think it was worth the upside in a dynasty like that late. Yeah, no. And who just said the Vikings' offensive line isn't better this year? And uh, last night was just a fluke. But I, I just don't think it fits what they're supposed to do. I, that's why they're not impressed with McBride, I really feel. It, it, it's just his play style doesn't fit for that team. Can, can, okay, so 
I have an idea that I think would be really interesting here because I do think it will speak to what a lot of owners and general managers and coaches and even players are thinking during training camp. We're dealing with players getting cut, undrafted free agents, you know, undrafted free agents. You know, now you're dealing with veterans that might this might be their last chance. You know, they just had a kid; they're 35 years old. You know, this is their last chance to make a roster, a last chance to make an NFL paycheck. You got talented guys with checkered paths like Kareem Hunt for some reason not getting job. You got the scarcity of like Ezekiel Elliott. It's like he's been pretty good as a touchdown scorer, as a red zone guy, as a, as a green zone guy, but he's still out there. Was it just that he played for a better team? So we all know like personality matters and different coaches have different philosophies. What's the one thing, Gov, in DFS, just to Flipping on its head a bit, that you that you probably should do in week one, or that you see a lot of people doing that you just can't get behind. Any trends that you're seeing? Right now, no, <clears throat> nothing yet. But really, like most of that's going to come that week before. Like once the third preseason game hits and everyone mm-hmm. starts to realize what teams are going to actually look like then there will be some like stands like that that'll end up happening. But like right now here in the preseason, not really that I can see off the top that or not that, that I've heard of reading in discord anywhere yet. Donnie, how much personality factors into Kareem Hunt or Ezekiel Elliott getting a job? Like truly. <laughs> Honestly, at this point for Kareem Hunt, it's been so long, and he was so much younger. I don't think it matters too much anymore. Like we've seen him come into a locker room with the Browns, then be is good not... with his role, be okay with his role, and thrive in it. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying like give the people the answer. Then why isn't he signed? Is he asking for too much money? Is he just not as talented as we thought he was? The injuries, honestly, he's been very injury prone the last couple of years. I get that he's he's got the talent, but he he can't be a full down or a three down back anymore. So you're really only using him every once in a while. Not to mention you're gonna have to pay him more than you'd have to pay a lot of these other guys. Why would you not try to get a guy like Dalvin Cook instead? Once Dalvin goes, we'll see the other ones start to go. Yeah, I think that is the domino. It's like, where does Dalvin go? Then you'll see if Lenny signs somewhere. Then you'll see Hunt sign or Hunt somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> Whoa! That was me. That was that was that was me coughing. Excuse me. At the same time, <clears throat> excuse All me right. as I as I clear my throat to that stupid cunt. Uh, this. <laughs> But no, that that is to my point though. To be fair, that is to my point. We're in, no, that, we're in, yeah, you're right. We're in like an only like all those guys will start to fall. And I'm still 100% convinced the second Pollard in week four goes like, oh, my leg. Oh, my. Zeke's there. Oh, it's a hamstring. He's just a little. Zeke's back on the Dick Cowboys. Yeah, I I expect Zeke to be a Cowboy, honestly. Yep. I I, I think this is just a way of Zeke getting to like play. I want to do the Gronk one year. He went up to Jerry and was like, I want to be Gronk one year. He's like, fine, just retire and go do whatever you want, and then we'll sign you back in November. So how, some how, shit like that. Evan, how are we are how how do you prepare yourself as a fan in training camp? Like what are you looking for? Like what do you think makes you a like a legit good fan? The the more I can avoid hype and noise from training camp, the happier I am because what I've played fantasy football for too long to know that I would say more than 90% of the hype that you hear out of training camp is stuff that you can absolutely ignore because the starters are there. The contracts are there getting paid to uh, be the guy to uh, get 15 touches a game or eight catches a game. Uh, there, There's a, a lot of this stuff that I – and just happier tuning out and try not to fall too deep into the hype for when you have a guy like a, like a generic Prince, for example, making a lot of noise with the chiefs. It's juicy news because Clyde Edwards, E. didn't live up to his first round potential. And 
Uh, Isaiah Pacheco has been getting hurt, and they don't have a lot of running backs that can stay healthy either, as Andy Reid loves his committee. So it sounds great, but I'd be surprised if Prince was higher than like the fourth running back on the depth chart. I'm surprised that the Chiefs hasn't haven't made a play for someone like just get a receiver that they like and transition them to a running back at some point. <laughs> I, I'm waiting for Andy Reid to do something like that. Okay, go get Kareem Hunt back. <laughs> no, but honestly, that's a solid solution to their problem. Now maybe he he's not welcome in that building. I see. I think the Chiefs wouldn't welcome him back, but. See, but that's my point, Danny. It's like we say, like, oh, this doesn't matter to me, and I'll let one of you guys talk, and then, and then it's like an owner's meeting. It the other one speaks something like, oh, it does matter to me, and I think that's what's cool about football and sports in general. It's like we. All I don't think it matters to most of the league. I think it matters to Kansas City because it happened in Kansas City. Yeah, I don't know, man. Like. It's weird. Do, how, we, do you? I don't know if you remember how good Kareem Hunt was va- viewed at at the time when that happened, and they still cut ties with him. Yeah, I would have cut ties with him, but I mean, like, it's funny how we can all have our own takes, and like that's what's good about Dynasty League. That's what's good about best ball. Like, you, this is the time when you can put your stamp on a team uh, on what you believe, and it, and then watch it play out. Part of what what makes the NFL so fun is that theater. It's watching your you know your predictions week to week, and that's what I really enjoy about DraftKings. Whether or just hanging out with you guys, it's like okay, it's not that I got to be right or we got to be right. It's like does it make sense? And if it makes sense, then it's it's worth tracking. So that's always what I what I find interesting. Any other takeaways we got to hit on before we get out of here? Uh, I just wanted to say one more thing about Hunt. I would be very surprised if the Vikings take him and then expect him to get uh, as much or more work than Alexander Madison because he did not look good last year. He, like, fell off after week five, and then they just stopped giving him as many carries. So Yeah, they lead all into Chubb. Yes, and Chubb was having a good year too. Yeah, it, it did correlate there. Like Chubb was having probably his best year, maybe his I'm, best year for his whole career. We'll see. Hopefully I'm, not. I hope he st- thrives even more. But I'm a big know. fan of Chubb. I I don't think there's something not to like about Chubb. Chubb's one of the few players on the Browns that's extremely likable. Very much. Well, Great. And- Oh, I, I try to draft him all the time in in best ball. He's and it, 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 it doesn't matter what. Like if I can, and it's not like one of the first like four or five picks in a draft because there's that's about the only piece. Like I have Chubb five in my rankings. In if I'm drafting a season long team, there's only like four other dudes I take ahead of Chubb. I'd agree with that because I do think it's his get receiver. my anchor RB for the year. Fuck yeah. Well, and I just think his receiving numbers go up. If Watson isn't the quarterback we thought he, you know, was, or he he has adapted his style a bit more, we could see more dump offs too. So Chubb is very appealing for the workload. See, here's my. And maybe I'm wrong for this, and maybe it makes me just like all the NFL GMs and owners and whatnot. But if I have a see a running back have a career year, I'm off them. Automatically, I'm off them for the next year. And maybe that's a you know that could clearly be a wrong assumption. I'm sure there's plenty of anomalies, well, not anomalies, but examples of that happening. Just lately, that seems to be the case. A running back has a career year, and then we see a drop off immediately. I feel like that's been a common piece of logic that a lot of people who have had Derrick Henry in Dynasty have put on him as well, because everybody's scared that he's either going to get hurt or that but he's going to fall off at any time. I've seen it consistently with Derrick Henry for so long that he's going to be a top three back. That that doesn't bother me. Like, I think Derrick Henry, with Derrick Henry's size, he's not built like most of the average running backs. This is the first, uh, see, and I have the opposite. This, or sort of. I agree with Donnie, but this is also the first year I'm looking at his backup in best ball 
and in season long as like a stash. Like, so Spears would have been like one of the running backs other than Charbonnet that I might have thought about in like a I would have done that if Hopkins didn't sign, but because Hopkins is there now, I think there's See, that, that's at. the thing. I agree with that. You know, they're going to at least try here. They're going to run their offense as effectively as possible. Like they, means, this is going to be what they did with AJ Brown. This is what they want. Yeah. That, 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 which means Henry's getting a bunch of carries. Hopkins, but they, they can't stack Hopkins the box. Double, yeah, they can't sack the box and double cover Hopkins yeah, without you know, leaving what is now going to be our greatest best ball pick ever, Traylon Burks, open completely on the other side. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> definitely of a, a, a mistake. I do think it will end up being a good pick. But, like, that's the thing is they wanted – Julio Jones to be that guy for Henry, and he wasn't that guy. It, the, the philosophy was there. He just couldn't produce. Hopkins, I feel like, still has the juice. And then Traylon, I think, is learning, hey, these opportunities don't last forever. Like, you think they do, but even a guy like John Ross is out of the league, even though he has blazing speed and had all the hype just a few years ago. And he, wasn't he on Kansas City when he retired? Like that was the that was the team that was gonna be able to make him work if he was gonna work in the NFL. Yeah, but that's what I mean. Like you you go from hype to, to nothing very quickly, you know. Um, well, the John Ross hype is a little overblown once he ran the four two two. I'm saying hindsight's twenty twenty. That it's easy to say a guy's overblown when he doesn't pan out. In these he cases, ran four, four, he ran a four-two-two when his draft stock went up. In, in, in these cases, it's a, it's 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 not entirely possible to watch every single NFL game. But I also feel like that this is usually a case of when some if there are people who don't really get the chance to watch every uh every player like a Derrick Henry out there to see that he hasn't lost anything, he hasn't slowed down a bit. It's easy to fall into that narrative where it's like, eh, maybe I should go grab his backup. Eh, maybe he'll have his career year, and then maybe now's the time to sell. Um, but Derrick Henry is going to be the exception to the rule where after four years or after age 26, it's time to dump him. Um, how much longer he's going to last is anybody's guess, but I mean, I, do, I don't see why he can't try to go after Adrian Peterson's records. Yeah, yeah also... I want to say this because I have the Broncos game on in the background. Russell Wilson does not looks very, very jumpy in that pocket. He what does else not is look, new? Oh <laughs> yeah, no, no, but like it's bad. He, he, this is the preseason, and he he can't stay still. Dude, that's because he actually has like a legit coach that will bench him. Sean Payton will not play. So I, I I don't you know it's preseason don't buy into too much but like I am too even on the good plays but that's not the point could it just be that Denver has a shit offensive line it could be but man Russell Wilson is also a quarterback who is never good at knowing when to throw the ball away he takes so many sacks and I'm amazed he hasn't been hurt more than he has been as a result of those sacks. This is true. Uh, you could say the same thing about Aaron Rodgers. Like some, sometimes it just that's the play style. And but Aaron Rodgers did throw the ball away, decent, but he still took the hit. Yeah, my Bears offensive line was absolutely atrocious last year. Justin Fields still didn't take as many sacks as Russell Wilson. Yeah, that, I, I mean it's just alarming, it's different. It, a lot. But that's what I like about Lamar Jackson so much while we're on that topic, he'll, you know, he'll move a lot, but he doesn't take the big hit usually. I, I, that's, that's such an underrated, underrated quality that he has. He avoids bad hits. Young is really good at that. I know you probably don't watch a ton of college yet, Donnie, but I think you're going to be really impressed. I don't put value into that when you play at Alabama, have the best offensive line, the best receiver. I need to see it in the NFL. I'm telling you, he's got he's got good field awareness. He he won't take that many hits this year. And if that's if that might be the case, I just need to personally see it in the NFL at the highest level. Fair enough, and we do want to see it. 
Football is getting closer. Anything else we got to talk on tonight? Um, I mean, we could all I if there is a free contest or something, we could always speed run, get Evan a taste of DFS. But yeah, if you want to, if you want to do that, we can we can definitely build a lineup. Do we all have time for that? Of course. I'm sitting here sweating baseball. Why can't? Why is Kansas City scoring ten runs and not St. Louis? Like I'm, I'm, I'm. <laughs> Chris Sale back for the playoff. Sitting here, ten to six. Yeah, I know. I kind of wanted to play Chris Sale today. I should have played him and my boy Abbott, and I didn't. I played freaking Lance Lynn, who he just started. He's fine. He's fine. It's just it's Lance Lynn, and then I played Morton. Because the Mets have totally given up and they suck. But even Morton gets the win, but he couldn't strike him out. I feel like nobody gives up. Like and I should have stacked games. the fucking Phillies. 13 runs. I only had four. Baseball is so hard to predict this stuff. I I, I couldn't do it. Well, the 13 Tigers games played are... suck, but like, yes. In general, yes. I, baseball is such a hit and miss. But like, even the best the best players are going to be hitting under uh, around 40. Like, I don't know. Oh no. If you, if you, if you hit 400, you're like a God, right? Like the best of the best, like it's too, it's too inconsistent for me. See, this is like, this is like a good sports barbershop conversation where like one guy goes and gets a haircut and it's the next guy's turn. And then before you know it, they're talking about something totally different. And then we, we bring it back. Now, to get Evan back on the show, though, he's like, I don't know anything about DFS. And I, I don't know. I, I'm like, look, football takes translate more than you realize. And so Donnie had a good point. Let's introduce you to, to a the DFS format, which really isn't any more different than a lot of other structures or builds that you're going to build. Because you still want. If yeah, you were filling out a season-long league, you would kind of understand. Okay, my roster every week: it's a quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, a tight end, a flex spot that can be running back, wide receiver, or tight end, is and, then a, pre- and then a program? defensive slot. No, this is week one. This is week one. I still I hate week one this early, but. And then you, this is just a line, Donnie. And then, and then essentially, at that point, you do, it's a PPR uh, rule, so it's point per reception. And then, I mean, that's really it. And then you're just trying to build the best lineup. I guess the only difference is, how, how many people do you think you you play on average in a tournament? Uh, go, like an average single entry. It's like ten thousand people, right? I was about to say during football season, there's there's a there's like a twelve thousand person five dollar that I usually end up yeah. playing in every week. But like I also play in like the you know we play in like Smiths and ETR and the smaller right. listener leagues, but and they're more I, like, I like five, they're more like at most four thousand. There's zero room for error, basically. Well, like if you want to hit the big prize, I yeah, no, like if you're playing the milli. That's hundreds of thousands of people, or, or well, maybe not people, but lineups. Mm-hmm. That's hundreds of thousands of lineups. You're playing it. So here's You're what we do, Evan. Here's what we do usually when we build it. We we usually kind of let each other each other make the case, and then we'll have like, and then we'll kind of draft from there, just like you would a snake draft, and it, and see if we can come up with a good lineup. We'll give you the first pick here. Obviously, you can go anywhere you want. All for me. We yep. will say we oh, yeah, usually we did this last quarterback year. first, but that's yeah. not that's that not a rule. Right? That, it's it's not a hard rule, but we try not to pick quarterback first. Okay, so yeah, this has to matter by matchup, uh, projected points, the opponent's ranking versus that position. Yeah, and, Vegas and, totals like that's usually the main things we're looking at. Right, I high Vegas total games. I want the offense that's going to score the points in that game. Yeah, and we have a fifty thousand dollar limit, so that's going to come into the play as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I I agree with the fact that we don't have to spend the eight k on a Lamar Jackson right away just because he's we playing really in do. Houston. 
which has an underrated defense, I might add, even though Lovey Smith is now gone, so I don't know how good they're going to be anymore. Um, so it, I would think with very little DFS experience in my realm, um, I mean, I might, I've might i tried the Yahoo free DFS for you, winning my league a long time ago, which is nothing at all like this. Right. Listen. And I we're have played on this. Yahoo too. It is not the same. As um, with first pick, it's fair game. If you want to go ahead and get CMC, who's going to be top dollar guy, that's we can't say a word about that. You could go ahead and spend. You want to play that JJ? Dollar. Like if if you just got a guy you know you love week one in that. I match, was known last there. last season. I was known for taking the big guy. Of like who yeah. was just gonna be? I was the one who took the took the bullet and took the big guy. <laughs> and sometimes you need a dude that's just gonna get yeah. you points and anger. I'm gonna bet. Sometimes you you gotta have that conviction. You gotta go for it. You gotta say this is the guy. I believe oh, yeah. in it. It's happened. So Logan, can you click on the wide receiver tab for me? I think we're gonna go that way first. Yes, sir. I, I like it. Sounds good. All right. So who do we got at top here? Uh, okay. So obviously Justin Jefferson. That's a damn good pick. Uh, Cooper Cup with the hamstring injury. I would hope that doesn't linger too long against Seattle's uh, rebuilt defense. Adams hurt l yesterday at practice. Yep. Um, let's see. I am not a big fan of Cleveland's secondary, so I would probably go as high as Jamar Chase. Uh, I, I mean, let's really want to look at the rest of the wide receivers before I make a choice here. You you can go ahead and look for whatever you want. Don't I wouldn't even look at the prices with the first. That personally, I don't look at the prices with the first. Yeah. Like, if I see something I'm convicted to, I'm taking it. Hmm. Yeah. So, so Logan, what I'm thinking is uh, toward the top, I would probably go as high as a Jamar Chase to start this lineup. Jamar Chase and. But and and that's largely be, and that's largely because uh, I would want to bank on that against Cleveland's secondary, who I am not big on, even though they have I, big enough names. I agree with that. I don't like the quarterback in Cincinnati. It's been one of my blind spots. Um, whether I'm right or yeah. wrong about it. Did you give that up yet? Nope. All right. So who's who's <laughs> the second pick? Gov, why don't you have second pick? All right. Then we're going to do something fun then, because I love correlation. So we're going to correlate with the home killer, and we're going to say we're playing Amari Cooper with Deshaun or with with uh, Jamar Chase. I don't know I like if we're going to go Deshaun at quarterback. I don't know if we're going to stack this game, but we may mini correlate this game with Chase and Cooper. Coop, like you look at him on DraftKings, like seven fantasy points better at home than on the road last year. So I'll take Cooper at home with a healthy Desha – with, with Deshaun ready to go week one. Donnie, you go ahead, buddy. Oh, Logan, listen, it's going to handicap us a lot, but I trust you as Mr. Value Play. Give me CMC. Oh right. uh, yes, I ha I have I, as a Panthers fan, I have nothing wrong with drafting Christian McCaffrey ever. <laughs> Listen, uh, I trust any, I trust Mister Value right here. Go ahead, bounce us back with some value. All right, Logan, do you take the obvious one? It's Pitts, isn't it? Oh, Alec Pierce. Uh, there you go, <laughs> Mister Value at the finest. Why Alec Pierce, Logan? Uh, Richardson likes to throw deep. I think Pierce has the has the, the the deep route in him. I think he's about to explode. And I've um, I kind of think that Pittman is kind of like the Kenny Galladay. And in a couple of years, people are gonna we're just gonna be like, oh yeah, Pittman was a good story a couple of years ago, and then he just kind of fades. No, uh, are you? Are you, are you Sorry, are you not worried about Josh Downs? No. We like Alec Pierce on this cha channel. I think we've played him three times last year, maybe four times last year. Maybe we played him last time. I think, yeah. think Gov always cringes when I take Pierce. I was not as high on him as you guys are, but like I agree with the pick. And the, like this leaves us open. So like, uh, right, yeah. wait. So we're snake drafting. So Logan, yep. pick number two.
you, you are you gonna stack us? Are you are you gonna stack us? Just just put Richardson in. I, I was about to say, just play Anthony Richardson. There's, there's too much value with the young quarterbacks here. I think I 100 percent agree with this. Rushing yep. upside too with on a quarterback is great. Like at, at 5600, you don't need him to outscore Lamar and Burrow. You just need him to get to like 22 or 23 fantasy. No, I don't even think you need him to get 22. Like if he gets no, no, 17, no, he probably I... needs to get over 20. So I say 22 to be like solidly over 20. Yeah. But like if he gets over 20, he's going to hit his value. Like an ideal value is like, I want, what, well, well, like, I'm trying to think, what is it? It's, it's like for every thousand dollars, I want five fantasy points at quarterback. That's so at fifty six hundred. I would love twenty five to twenty six, but anything in the twenties works. Honestly, I would have been okay with your Burr in this lineup, but he's coming off an injury. We don't know if he's one hundred percent. I don't mind that at all. That doesn't take me. All right, it's back to me, and I'm gonna go ahead and I need to see some running backs. I need a value back here. Got to have a cheap running back on DraftKings. Oh, Brian. yeah. They just, because there, there's not enough pass-catching running backs, it's just always better to trend towards a cheaper running back. Hope he falls into the end zone. You get 15 to 18 out of him. Before you, unless they're like a high-end Eckler or McCaffrey, they don't have the ceiling to get you 30-plus. Before you pick that value back, did did my eyes just deceive me, or is Brian Robinson eight thousand dollars? Beyond Robinson is way that overpriced. Is Robinson. Yeah. Thank goodness. Okay, I I, I'm, I was gonna say that would have okay. Let's Brian move on. Robinson has a junior next to his name. Yes, good. Yeah, so that is Bijan, the rookie, who I still think is overrated. Like I'm sorry, that he, Atlanta offense is disgusting. not going to run as much as they did last year, he should be and, that, and that still didn't sustain the guys they had to be. Like it made them all fantasy relevant, but no one was a fantasy like killer throughout the year. He's so I don't see why Bijan should just be immediately one of the top three backs in the league. He's a head just of Maybe he is. Maybe Atlanta's going to come in, give him 25 carries a game, and I'm no. just going to be like, oh, well, I'm totally wrong. Yeah. And they're going to keep good. running down two touchdowns on third and long in the in the second half, and it's just going to be crazy. It's like they're just going to keep doing that. Okay, I'm wrong. Whatever. He, and he, you know, he, go ahead, finish up. Derrick Henry is behind him. Okay. That's yes. And why? so is Jacobs. Yeah. Okay, now pick <laughs> well, but go ahead, pick, I, pick the guy uh, who you want. I think the value running back here, considering we know the prices and we know the, the result of this situation, we're going uh-huh. to New Orleans here. Okay. And Logan, I'm not taking your guy. I'm sorry, I can't. We're going with Williams. I'll probably, I'll Jamal probably Williams want... is solid at five k, right around five k. Like that's not bad. It is not bad. Knowing that, knowing what we know now that um, Hunt gonna be or not Hunt, um, Kamara is gonna be suspended. Basically the same guy. They're both bad people. Um, yeah, but I, I like the pick. I think he's gonna be a touchdown machine in an offense that's trying to get Derek Carr into the groove. They're gonna pound the rock. I think. Yeah, it's not a bad pick, Evan. You got you got a pick for us here. Uh, that's, that's a good question. Uh, so if we're going to go, is it, it's, I guess I could do, so is, is it my choice tight end flex or defensive special yeah, teams? Whichever, whichever one. Yeah, whichever also, can you show him the prices of the defense so we can understand? Yeah. Like, and then like, like, we're, like, it looks like 4,300 isn't a lot considering like 8k for the, all the top end guys, but defense is never more good. than like 4k usually and tight end. Is also and you other rarely than pay up for the defense. These are all guys where we're probably paying three thousand or less for those two positions. So you know you're still going to have like five k something for a flex. And if you just completely punt at tight end and defense, which we do a decent amount, which we do a lot, then you might have like another six k for a flex guy. Hmm. All right. Uh, uh, the defense, defense is what the Texans. Yeah. 
Yeah. Take that out for now. Yeah, take that out. But like, like, see, if you do that, now you have fifty four hundred. If you were to put in a mid price yeah. tight end at twenty five, you'd have almost seven k for a flex. You could play anyone that's not just those top end guys. Yeah, that's. I, I think I'm going to be bold, and I'll, I'll pick the DST for this one so that we can go forward with the remainder. Uh, so let me. I, I'll be. I'll be honest. I haven't looked at this list, so it might take me just a few seconds here to ponder yeah, stop this over. So fast on them. <laughs> um, like I said, we usually try to like punt and play someone under 3K, but uh, that's all them. I'm, all I, I always for, pay up for defense. Again, on them it's it's ideas. fantasy <laughs> defense. All I'm looking for is a defense that's going to go against a team that has to throw, whether it's mm -hmm. because they're behind or whatever. A team that has to throw because they're going to throw picks and throwing picks or getting sacks because they have to throw is how you get points on fantasy defense. Hey, uh, Logan, can I be a bold homer here for a second? You can. You I'm going to pick the Bears defense. I like it. Not a bad pick. Oh, bears, the bears, the bears. Oh, I'm going to pick it because I am not that confident in that Green Bay's offense anymore, and I think they've very solidly improved with a lot of great free agents, and then they got Tyreek Stevenson with a second-round pick at their next cornerback. I think Green Bay's in for a bad time. And that I think leads it to – Gov, right? Yep. Actually, like, I honestly just had a weird thought come in my head I want to throw out there as soon as I get my pick. But it's just a crazy, like, football thought. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. But, okay, so, um, let me see. Let me, let me correlate our stack and give us Evan Ingram at tight end. There's our bring back to our, there's our Jacksonville coming. bring back. I was looking for a Jacksonville play, and I wanted to do ETN so bad, but I couldn't with the price tag. Yep. And so that leaves us, what's in the 5,300 range at Flex? Calvin Ridley, maybe? Like, click well, on I think it is your pick. I think it is your, no. Would this be Gus pick, technically? I think it should be a group pick, if anything. Yeah, like, like since we have four, we each get two. And then the last pick, we try to make a consensus in the 5,300 range. So we got Bateman. We got, oh, we have our correlation play, which would be Deontay on the other side of McCaffrey. Another correlation play would be a Tennessee guy, which I don't see in that range, really. I yeah. would play Sutton or Jerry, or Jerry Judy. See, now. Is Russ going to have to look throw to him? <laughs> I'm looking at a guy like... Oh, look, there's Brian oh, Robinson Jr. We could play him. Hey, look, there's Traylon Burks. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... Oh, there's Tank. I'm, we can just play Tank instead of Ingram. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, seriously. I'm looking at a guy like... I actually George prefer Pickens. Pickens to Deontay. Yeah. What do you guys think? Yeah, I was thinking Pickens. Personally. I love that Pickens pick. And that actually leads into the question, the weird question. Who do you, which team do you think throws more? Pittsburgh or Green Bay this year? With Ooh. Pickett and those weapons. Pittsburgh. But it's Pittsburgh. historically it's Pittsburgh versus Green Bay that historically would let their quarterback cook. And now they're giving it to Jordan Love. They've got Watson. They've got Dubs. They go out and get uh, Reed. So it's like, which team do you actually think passes more this season? Pittsburgh. Yeah, Pittsburgh. I you think they guy. actually have more pass attempts. Yeah, I yeah, think I like what I they think did pick guy and I don't like or a higher guy. pass percentage. Like I don't care how you whether it's more pass yeah. attempts or a higher pass percentage of plays throughout the at the end of the year, you think Pittsburgh throws more than Green Bay. Yeah. yeah I think to be Pittsburgh by just a very small margin, I think it's gonna be close. See, I think it's very close. Again, I, I agree with you. And I think it might be Green Bay. Just because we'll like, I, I I don't know. I just have this weird feeling that it might be Green Bay, which means it's probably solidly going to be. Better. I do I do love Jordan Love. In fact, I think they finished second in the division. The Packers. Okay, but take it. Let's take a second. This is now lineup four that we built. This is the group one we built together. How correlated is it to our initial lineups? Do we know? Do you have that ability to check? Well, I know this one was mine. I know the Watson one was mine. 
which had Mixon instead of Chase. I know the Herbert one is the. I believe that's the one we all made because I have your, I have uh, that's mine because I have that one saved on my. I'm like I yeah. have that lineup saved. Yeah, the Herbert one is mine. Yeah, we didn't build one together yet. We were, I think we held off. Yeah, the, the Richardson one is the first one we've actually built together this year, and yeah. it was all four of us now. And this Stafford one was one I built by myself. Yeah, and it's very so similar. Like, those three are like our, really our like own it. like personal first looks when we built a lineup. Just we really your... like this Browns game, huh? This Browns Cincinnati game. I'm the only one who didn't grab a piece of it. I think. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, you are. I could have had Mixon or Hig. Like, to be fair, if I got off Rashad White and wasn't doubles tapping, Evans could probably just be Higgins. Yep. Probably. I could probably figure out a way to do that. And I, this is the per like. The lineup that we built here together, I we fit Jamar Chase, Amari Cooper, and Christian McCaffrey all in a lineup. Those are all number one targets. You could argue Pickens is a number one target. That's four number ones. Like Pickens. Ingram is a top five tight end. The Bears have a good defense. The probably the only Jamal the, is the, a the most questionable back. thing, like even Jamal Williams should be the starting back for Norland. Like the most questionable thing about this lineup is what the hell does Anthony Richardson do week one? All this lineup says is we we say everyone all of week one, all the all the dudes are gonna just do what they do, and Anthony Richardson's gonna look like ninety percent Cam Newton or something like that. You remember what Robert Griffin in the, in the third did his his rookie. Exactly. Yeah. He's gonna have one of those kind of like, oh, running quarterback, hundred yeah. yards on the ground and a rushing touchdown. 200 through the air. I no don't picks. think he's ready as a passer. One pick or something like that. Right. I and think I think we say that's passer. how we built this. Yeah. I, I like it, though. Yeah. yeah. It's a different lineup. It's not – I don't like Richardson that much. I think he just fits in too well with this lineup not to have it. <laughs> now, I did see Evan yawning a, a, a few minutes ago over there, so I got to make sure the man gets in BD sleep. Is there anything else you guys want to say before we get out of here? Nope. I no, think we're good. I thought that was a fun exercise. Yeah, I think that's good. It was. We'll, we'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. Of course, we did a best ball at the beginning of the offseason. We'll do one at the end of preseason just to have a, a compare and contrast. And then it gets really fun because we, we have our season-long projections we can track throughout the year. And then each week we'll break down our lineups. Maybe bring in on Evan to break down our, our lineups would, would be fun because you don't really have – uh, uh, you know, horse in the race kind of thing. And so, like, you can objectively look at our lineups a lot different than the, most of the, you know, trained DFS eye, if you will. So I do think that'd be interesting for some of our Monday review, review shows. Uh, I guess that's it, guys. It feels a bit – we're actually getting out of here a little early. It feels like I'm a teacher letting out the kids on summer vacation a little bit early. But uh, have a good night. Take care. See ya. Good night, everyone. Good night. Peace out.